Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to use pipes in Angular. And pipes are basically ways that you can transform data. And um, you can think of it as sort of like filters. And you can do it in a way where you don't manipulate the original data itself. So it's really nice. So let me give you a few examples. So first I'm going to show you built-in pipes. So Angular has a few built-in pipes that you can use. Um, right away. So I'm going to create an input here. And so I have it tied to this variable here called person, which just has my name. And so you'll see it just looks like that. And so now if I want to add a built in pipe to this, what I can do is if you're using ng model, um, what you can do is you can um, disconnect the change event to this. So you just remove the parentheses and then you can do this instead. ng model change person equals event and that'll just do the same thing that you had. It'll update um, binding both ways. And then now you can add a pipe like this and then the name of the pipe. So one example of an Angular built-in one is title case. So that'll basically do exactly what you think it's going to do, title case it. And anytime I change this, no matter what I do, it's always going to title case it. Um, another one is uppercase. So that does the same thing. It'll just always um, enter an uppercase. But again, I want to remind you, this doesn't actually manipulate the original value. Um, the original value will not be affected by the pipe, just what you see in the view. Um, so that can come in handy a lot of times. So let me show you another one. And that's binded to this variable right here that I have, which is just set to the current date. And you'll see it displays the entire, um, actually let me add a class this so you can see the whole thing. It shows the entire date object um, all the way down to the zone and everything. Um, so I can add a pipe to this. I can just say date and then the format that I want, right? So don't forget these little quotation marks. So for example, I can do month, day, year, and that'll manipulate that. Um, and there's a bunch of different ones that you can do. You could even use built-in ones. So for example, short date, that'll look like that. Um, so that's just some of the ones that you can use. Another thing you can do is chain pipes. Um, so that looks like this. So for example, right here, I can add another pipe just like that. Now, obviously you would never really do this because this is just gonna remove what you did in the first pipe. Um, but I kind of just wanted to give you an example of how these pipes work. They work in order. So my uppercase gets replaced by the title case. Um, but if you want to chain pipes, um, it's as easy as that. Next, I wanna show you custom pipes that you can build. So I'm going to, um, I have this data here, all right? I have an array of cars, and these cars basically just have a color and then a name. And then I have these colors here, which is an array of strings, and that's gonna be what I want to filter by. So let me show you what I'm gonna do here. So first I'm gonna create a list, and I'm gonna loop through my array of cars. So I'll just say ng4, let car of cars, car name followed by the car color. And let me just, oops. Okay, and then you can see here is my data that I'm looping through and I'm actually, I'm gonna comment this out so that it doesn't get too confusing. Um, and then right above this, I'm going to add um, an input to this. And actually before I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a pipe. So I'm going to go inside of my app folder and open up a terminal window. And then I can just say NGG for generate pipe and I'll name it car pipe. All right, then once that is done, I'm going to go ahead and open up that pipe so I can show you what it looks like. So it basically just has this transform method from the transform, the pipe transform interface. And so you can use it using the name here. So uh, all you have to do is just outside of the array here, you pass in that pipe. 
So because it returns null, you'll see now that the data is gone. There's, there's nothing there. Um, so what I can do to change this is just say value and that will just return the original data like that. And so my value here is basically, this is an array. This is my array of cars. Um, so I'll just bring that in. And I'm not gonna worry about the argument for right now, but this is gonna return an array of cars. So let's say I only wanna return cars that are blue. I can say value.filter, and then I'm only gonna return the car whose color is equal to blue. So I can do that. And so now you'll see filters out everything and it only returns the blue ones. So let's say I wanna make this a little bit more dynamic. I don't wanna hard code it in here like that. So what I can do is I can pass in an argument to this and you do that with a colon and then you pass in the value that you want. So I can say color like that, um, not color, but blue like that. And so now this will come in here and I can just say string since I know that it is. And so now I can just say args like that. And then you'll see that does the same thing, but it's a little bit more dynamic. So let's go ahead and customize this further. I'm gonna finish this input here that I was creating. Um, so I'm just gonna say, um, and actually I'm not gonna use an input at all. I'm gonna use a select. So I'll say select and for the name, I'll say color and I'll add an ng model to this, which is going to be color. And so I have that here in my component, which is this string right here, this color. And I'm gonna create a loop of options based on these colors, okay? So you can pick from blue or red. And so you can do that with option, and I'm gonna have a, a default one that just says none. Um, but then I'm gonna have another one, which is going to be the loop. So I'll say ng4, let car color of colors, right? Which is this array again, this one right here. So it's gonna have those two colors. And then for the value, I'm just going to say car color is the value. So then here I will display um, car color like that. And let me add a class to this as well so you can see it better. And let me make sure that works. Okay, and you see my colors there. So then now I can take whatever the value of the current color is that I chose and pass it here instead. So I'm gonna erase that and add the variable color. And so that's gonna bind to this here. So um, that's gonna pass it in here. And the problem with this is um, by default, there is no color um, because you, I haven't selected one yet. So you see by default, nothing shows. So I'm just gonna add a check here, right? I'm gonna say if, um, if color, I'm gonna change this so I can, uh, a little bit more readable. And I'll just do that. If color is true, um, then I'm gonna say value equals value.filter and say car, car.color is equal to color, right? So if the color was provided in the, in the arguments um, as a parameter, then we can go ahead and filter by the color. And basically we take the, the array and we only want the ones that match the color. Okay, so this should return all colors, uh, I mean all cars by default until I pick one. So if I pick blue, you'll see the ones that are blue. And then if I pick red, it'll pick that. And then if I pick none, since no argument was provided, it gives me all of them back again, okay? So I'm also gonna add another way to filter this. So I'm gonna create an input below here, type text. And this one's gonna be um, for the car name. And I think I already have a variable for that. Okay, I do, yeah. So this is the name string right there. So then I'm gonna pass this as a second argument. So you just do colon and then the name of the variable. So then in here, I can go and say name string. And this question mark just means it's optional since we're not gonna have one by default. Um, so I'll do it that way. 
And so I'll do the same thing. I'll say if name is true, then I'll go ahead and filter them by name as well. Say car, car.name is equal to the name. And actually, I don't want this to be equals because then I have to type it exactly as it is. So instead, I'll say includes name. And then I'll also make sure to lowercase it in case the user types in something, uh, you know, in uppercase, we still want to match. Um, so let's see if this works. First, I'll filter it by blue. Let's say I only want the Viper or maybe the Thunderbird. Okay, so that works and you can do it um, this way as well. Okay, so that's just a way to provide uh, more arguments. You just keep adding that colon there like that. So next I wanna show you how to manually call a pipe as well. Um, so let me show you something really quick. So I'm gonna remove, um, I'm gonna show this one and I'll just get rid of this for right now. So you see here that the date is piped, right? So it's transformed, that's not how it is originally. But if you go into the class and let's say I go in here I say console log this dot today. You'll see that the date the the date is piped like that, but it's still showing me the original date. So it doesn't actually affect the original data. So I'm going to show you how to use the pipe from within the class um, in case you do want to actually transform that data from within here. Um, so first you'll need to bring in the pipe that you need. Um, so let's say I'm going to use the uppercase pipe, right? So I'll say um, name equals new and then the name of the pipe. So I'll use the uppercase pipe and you want to bring that in from the Angular common library, just like that, depending on where you're pulling that pipe from. And so now I can say dot transform. And that's the same method that's in here that comes from the pipe transform interface. And then you pass in the value that you want to transform, right? And so that's going to create that string for you, but with the pipe transformed on it. Um, you know, if you wanted to replace the value entirely, then obviously you could do something like this. So let me go ahead and console log this and make sure that this is working as intended. Oh, okay, I did the wrong value. Actually, this should be um, person. Um, that's actually what I used and then you'll see the name is actually transformed there okay the last thing i want to show you is pure and impure pipes um, so pipes are pure by default and let me show you what that means so i'm going to add a button down here and i'm going to comment these out again and so let me add this in there really quick So what peer means is that um, whenever you add something to um, an object or an array that's being piped, Angular is by default not going to reload the data if it's the same object reference. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. So let's say I construct a new car, right? So I say, you know, new car, um, and then I say name is going to be, I don't know, Fusion color blue and then I take my original array which was cars and then I push to that array new car so this is what I mean by you're not changing the reference this is still the original array okay I did not create a new one all I'm doing is adding to the current one that exists right this would be the same as if I did something like this right here I'm changing the property of the the original object i'm not assigning an entirely new object okay so what happens is if this data is piped and you add a new object like this to it it's not going to show up if the data is transformed so let me show you what i mean so remember i have this new car fusion blue and i'm also going to log this the array after i push into it so that you can see it so let me show you what happens so if you do it as is, right, this will actually work. I hit add car and it adds it, everything is fine. You can see it here in my array. 
Um, but then if I filter this, right, so let's say I go to um, blue and then I hit add car, it's no longer there, but you can see it actually did get added to the array. That's because this is pure by default. And then if I clear this, it'll actually add it and everything will go back to normal. And now I can go back and it'll be there. But let's say I wanted to change this and I wanted it to show up even if I'm filtered. There's a couple of ways to do this and um, probably the easiest way is just to create a new reference. And so you can do this by creating um, just a new object reference. There's many ways to do this, but I'll give you an example. So for example, I can just create a new array and then I'll place my new car in there. And then I'll add, whoops. And then I'll add my original array into there, right? So I'm basically constructing a new array with my original plus the new one. This will create a new array for me. And then I can replace the original with that new array. So this will create a new reference, um, a new object reference. So this will be a totally new array. I'm not pushing it to it anymore. So, so now you'll see um, what happens when I do this. So if I go to blue, now hit add, it actually does add it in there, okay? Um, but you might not always wanna do this. Um, if your object is big, maybe this would get a little bit too messy. Um, there is another way to do this. So I'm gonna remove all this and just go back to the way it was originally. And so what you can do inside of your pipe, right here in the, um, in the object declaration, you can add another property. And so you would just say pure false, okay? And so now this will basically reload the object every time it changes, okay? Even if you push like this into it, it'll still reload the entire thing. So let me show you how this works. So I'm gonna filter it, hit blue, add car, and you see that it still gets added, okay? Um, so that's one way to turn that off by default and have it that way. Um, but do keep in mind that this doesn't work for every situation. I mean, it works for every situation, but what you have to keep in mind is that because you're reloading the object every time, this could affect the performance. So if you have a huge array, this might not be the best option. Um, so it kind of just depends on the situation. Um, just I would say just use it smartly.